Welcome to Channel Y. I'm your host, Yudhi Jaswal. After all the action that's been happening in U.S., we see Ontario, there's lots of action happening here as well. Premier Doug Ford, he's been making quite a few statements, whether it's regarding economy, whether it's the environment. There are so many other things that are happening in Ontario, and we're fortunate to have three gentlemen here in our Channel Y studios. First of all, I'd like to welcome the Minister of Environment, Rod Phillips. Minister, welcome to Channel Y. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Very welcome. We also have uh, two MPPs uh, from Brampton. First of all, I'd like to welcome Amar Jyot Sandhu. Amar Jyot, welcome. Thank you, Jyotir Pari, for the opportunity. And I really admire all the great work you're doing uh, through your channel, through your newspaper, radio, uh, in keeping our communities informed about the daily news. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Amar Jyotji. Yeah. Thanks for all the kind words. We also have uh, MPP Prabhmeet Sarkaria with us. Uh, Prabhmeet ji, welcome to Channel Y. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor to be back here again. Thanks. You're very welcome. Uh, Minister, I'll start with you. We just uh, heard a statement uh, from the Premier. He said that because of the carbon tax plan, we could see a recession here, in uh, not just in Ontario, but in Canada. What's your take on that? You know, I think the, the uh, Premier was speaking about our priorities as a government. And, and they're really around getting rid of hallway health care, improving health care, trying to make sure our businesses are more competitive, and, and trying to balance out the, the finances of the province because they've been so badly managed for the last uh, 15 years. Um, but, but when it comes to that competitiveness question and when it comes to making sure that life's affordable for Ontarians, um, what he was raising is a real concern about the federal liberal plan to impose a carbon tax. Um, as you know, our party was elected with a mandate to get rid of the carbon tax cap and trade program. That has brought gas prices down, that's brought home heating prices down. We did that for two reasons. We did that because we knew that we had an environmental plan that I'd be happy to talk about that would address climate change without a carbon tax, but we also did it because we realized that people needed some more money in their pockets, that, that they'd been taxed enough. So when he talked yesterday about the risk, the real risk in this uh, to our economy, he said there's so much going on in the world that has people uncertain. Uh, there's so much going on in our own, uh, the changes that are going on in terms of the modern economy and the transitions that are happening for people. I'm from Durham region, what happened with General Motors out there, that kind of change. You know, After 100 years, a company like GM uh, leaving Oshawa which is which is very bad for, for folks in Oshawa and for Durham region, that, that another charge, another tax on jobs and a tax on families is one of the factors that could contribute to, to a recession, and nobody wants to see that. So he's ringing that alarm bell. He's saying people need to be aware that when the Liberals talk about tax and they talk about adding costs and they talk about taking money out of people's pockets and putting up the price of gas, those are just the kind of things that in the past, along with the other uncertainties, have led to an economic downturn, and none of us want to see that. Is this just an alarm bell, as you were mentioning just now, or is this um, there is any fact to the statement? Because uh, as much as I can recall, a Bank of Canada, when they made a statement, no doubt they did decrease the GDP from 2.1 to 1.7 percent, but not a single mention of threat because of carbon tax. No major bank has been mentioning that. I haven't seen that. Well, you know, in, in the Conference Board of Canada issued a report saying that there would be billions of dollars of money out of the economy. The federal government's own economic analysis said that there would be a 0.5 percent reduction in the GDP from from the federal liberal carbon tax. So, so. It's as you know, as we all know, it's never one thing. Mm -hmm. that, that you know, there are the series of things. But but I think all of us feel the tension in the economy today. People are working harder. They seem to be having a tougher time making ends meet. That's why our government's been so committed to trying to put money back into families' pockets. And so I think it's entirely fair. Just just as when we talk about climate and we talk about the environment, we say you know there are risks. We need to take action and be aware of those risks. Um, and that's why we have to do things like the environment plan that we put forward that that uh, that will help reduce. Uh, greenhouse gases. On the economic side, we need to raise the alarm bells too. And I, and I think it's it's right for him to signal that people, when 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 a, when a liberal government says we're going to tax you more, and when when the liberal assessment says it's going to cut the GDP by 0.5 percent, people should be asking the question: Well, how much more can the economy take? Yeah, you just mentioned about Conference Board of Canada. I'm not sure what the exact number, but I think they're estimating about three billion. That's correct. Over two trillion dollar economy, 2.1 trillion to be precise, and three billion, as much as it would make a dent, but not that much that we can call it a recession. So, are we really making a strong statement here? I, I think it's a strong point he's making that, you know, whether it's the conference board, whether it's the federal government's own economists, um, whether it's the analysis done by the Financial Accountability Office in Ontario, which is an independent officer who said it would be 648 dollars out of 
a family's pocket, and that's by 2022, to be fair, as the carbon tax goes up. Um, it, it, you know, um, what did, uh, I, I, and I'm going to, I hope I don't misquote, but I think it was Ronald Reagan said, you know, uh, a, a recession is when your neighbor loses a job, a depression is when you lose your job. Um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, for families, uh, that what they see is it's tougher and tougher to make ends meet. So I've certainly found, since the Premier said that, the feedback I've got from people is, you know, you know it'll be the economists and, and these folks that will project what, what, what may or may not happen, but all he's saying is be wary of adding more and more taxes to job creators, to families, and, uh, and you know, we have not had a recession in this province uh, for quite some time. Um, I think a lot of people um, are, are thinking about, you know, what do we do if we have that? One of the big reasons that we were elected, frankly, is because I think people recognized that the province was not on a sound financial footing. And so we are not in the best place we could be because of the irresponsibility of the previous government if something bad happens. So, so, um, so listen, we, we're putting policies in place and plans in place to try to avoid uh, you know, any kind of downturn. Um, but more taxes on jobs, more taxes on families are not the kind of policies that promote economic growth. And even their own statistics say that. Yeah. Pramit, I want to talk with you regarding uh, education. You know, when, when the funding was uh, you know, taken away for universities, especially Milton, yeah. Brampton, in other places, you know, there was a lot of discussion. What's your take on that? Look, uh, you know, when we took over the province uh, after June seventh, um, we were and we created a commission to review uh, the government's finances. Uh, it was unfortunate that we were left with a $15 billion deficit for, for the year. Um, and we knew action had to be taken. Uh, look, I want to see a university in Brampton. Uh, that's important. And we're going to fight for it. Me and my colleague, Amar Jodh, we're going to do whatever we can uh, to fight for it. And we're going to keep fighting for it. But at the current moment, the Ontario's fiscal situation, uh, every single day we spend $40 million more than we take in as a province. So we've got a serious issue here with our finances um, and so uh, for the time being we've put the, uh, put the university on pause but we're going to fight for it and we're going to make sure that we get our finances in order in the province uh, and so we can uh, try to continue with this because it's uh, imperative uh, that we reduce our debt uh, which has ballooned uh, three times what it previously was under this government and so we want to make sure um, that we can uh, take this province uh, move this province forward uh, and that's what exactly what our uh, uh, Premier has been doing in the f uh, first six months, whether it was with uh, uh, Minister Rod Phillips uh, introducing uh, legislation that repealed cap and trade, putting more money into our pockets, whether it was repealing um, the Green Energy Act, uh, in which uh, we're going to see, uh, you know, the disastrous Green Energy Act, where we can see reform in our hydro bills, so we can lower those bills, uh, and now the auto insurance uh, consultations that we're taking, because Brampton is um, hit with some of the highest auto insurance rates. So we've, we're, we're starting to take real action very quick and in the first six months of this government to, to get this province uh, moving forward and bringing in uh, good paying jobs and making sure everybody knows that Ontario is open for business. Yeah. Abhijit, uh, what do you, would you like to add uh, to what uh, Pramit has already said? Uh, definitely, Paji, I would say for our university, me and Pramit, we had several meetings with Ryerson uh, and we were shocked to know that there was no funding allocated uh, for the university. They just made a fake announcement uh, before the elections to attract voters. Uh, but there was no funding allocated. But listen, if you make any announcement, there should be funding put on the side that, okay, this is the funding for the university. Uh, but there was no funding, and we were shocked to know that. And auto insurance as well, that was the main concern uh, when I was knocking on the doors in my uh, own candidacy and election. Uh, that was the main concern of the people, auto insurance. Uh, so we have introduced a bill. Uh, it has passed the first reading. Second reading will be in uh, when we house sits in February, and I, I'm confident that it will become a law uh, before summer. Any idea where does this university thing stand? Because people are still expecting maybe we'll get back the funding for university, maybe we'll get back the funding for LRT that the Brampton has already missed. So we're meeting with uh, after that we had a meeting with Ryerson as well. We're meeting city uh, people as well from the state uh, uh, municipal government. So if they come up with a good idea, good plan, uh, definitely it's a pause for now. Uh, but if they have a good plan, we'll, we'll come back with the funding. All right. Minister, I want to ask you, you know, uh, the federal liberals, they've been talking a lot about uh, 
uh, infrastructure funding. I've uh, interviewed uh, all the ministers, including the prime minister. They've all said, yes, we are ready, but we need plans from provinces, the shovel-ready projects, including the finance minister, Bill Morneau himself. And uh, what is the plan that you propose, Ontario government, to really get that infrastructure dollars here? You know, it's one of the questions, and uh, MPP Sarkarian and MPP Sandhu are part of the discussions we have through our, one of one of our colleagues, uh, Minister McNaughton, uh, in terms of what we you know, what can we do quickly in partnership, not just with with the federal government, but but with local governments, and and where can we set those priorities? Um, in our campaign, uh, one of the main priorities that we laid out was about transit and transportation, yes. and uh, and and this is a case where much of the work that was done by the previous government uh, were things that we said that we would step into because we see that need, frankly, because of 15 years of inaction. Um, the federal government has said that they're ready to spend. In fact, they've, they've now projected deficits out until, I can't know when. Uh, 2024, yeah. and, and, and they haven't committed to balancing their book plans. Yeah, and, 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 but that is on the basis of, of major investments they've said they've wanted to make in infrastructure. So our colleague, Minister McNaughton, has, has said to them, fine, let's put your money where your mouth is. We're ready to go. Uh, just today, there was an announcement Minister McNaughton made. It's near and dear to my heart because it has to do with uh, water, with uh, cleaning up some of the sewage water uh, that we pump into our lakes and rivers, and so and investments there. And that's a case where we have a partnered with the federal government. But you'll see, um, I suspect because it's an election year for the federal government, um, I think you'll see a series of announcements and, and rollouts. And in each of those, we're going to want to be working with communities, including uh, you know, with Brampton, a very important community from our perspective, to make sure that the infrastructure that uh, that we're investing in is also the infrastructure that the local community needs. But um, in the, this is and this is why government is hard. Um, you know, we have the largest debt of any sub-sovereign, so any province or state in the world. Ontario has the largest debt after 15 years of, I would argue, somewhat reckless spending. But our premier has committed, and our government has committed, still to make sure we make the necessary investments in transit, transportation, healthcare, and those investments will get made. Um, so. So while we are trying to be more efficient and effective in making tough decisions, tough decisions like the campus decision here, uh, which, which you know, uh, my colleagues are right, was not funded. I mean, in my mind, it's irresponsible to go out and say to people, we're going to build this and build up hopes and not have set aside the money in the government budget. Um, but but while, while some of those tough decisions mean delays in projects that, that were important to communities, we need to make sure that the investments still continue, whether it's hospitals, uh, courthouses, uh, those necessary infrastructure that gets built. So, so, so I suspect because it's a federal election year, um, we might see a lot more shovels in the ground. And you know what? If that's good for Brampton and that's good for Ajax and that's good for Ontario, then we'll be standing there right beside them uh, making those investments. We've got to take a very short break and we'll carry on the discussion after this short break. Keep watching Channel Y.